Um, but maybe that's something that you can work on too, is to just get all the fields tested to make sure that none of them are contaminated because if Molly has less contamination than this lockdown right now, then um, either all should be locked down or not. <coughs> and I won't get into the details of that. So, <clears throat> on to what I would have, I wanted Sarah to hear. Uh, and I'll probably keep this in my notes and repeat it when she does come. But I, I really need to say this because there are people that are watching that have given me their info to bring to you guys today. So first of all, <clears throat> it would be easier for us to have been hearing from an affirmative action officer because then we would be assured that they are working together with human resources towards resolving the problem of the city, not hiring minorities because it is a huge problem. A lot of the police officers that do live in, that do not live in the city, sorry, are retiring and getting hurt, collecting a pension, and slipping into yet another city position now as a city employee. So not only are we not hiring from within the city, we are not even given the opportunity for our minority communities to hold a position in the city in which they live. For example, Major Kane retired and slipped into an IT position, or Officer LaJoy, who was a police officer, and due to an injury, he's no longer an officer. Nevertheless, he does not live in the city of the bucket, but slipped into a VIN checker position that a college student or anybody else would love to have had. Here we are, not only are we not hiring minorities, we are going above and beyond to hire whites who do not live in our city, taking the opportunity away from those minorities who live in the city would love that position. As a Cape Verdean community leader living in this city, I am highly offended that because Cape Verdeans check off Portuguese due to no box created for Cape Verdeans, the Portuguese are considered a minority here. So they get the jobs and fall into the minority category. That is a great way to pretend we have minorities, but the minority picture is not reflecting the actual demographics. Let me break this down for those in the back. Uh, I'm a true minority, and I can apply for a job as a Cape Verdean with the correct qualifications. A white Portuguese person can apply for the same job. The city will hire the white Portuguese because she's white, but then can count her as a minority hire instead of hiring me as a colored true minority. Nice twist. Very fitting to the design they're creating here. For those who know the history, you know, you, you can now imagine, not only are we as Cape Verdean walking into a white city hall, we are being served by white Portuguese who historically see us as slaves, and many still do. Why am I, as a Cape Verdean leader in this community, so especially ignored by Portuguese employees? Let them pick themselves out, I don't think they can say. I am below them, according to the history. Not only am I a woman of color, I'm Cape Verdean. Oof. Double whammer. If anyone thinks for one second that this type of behavior is not going on for every Cape Verdean visiting this building or police department, you may want to do your research, especially if you are in any leadership position or director position in the city, where the majority of your minority population is Cape Verdean, not Latino, Cape Verdean. There is a serious, disturbing trend here, and I will point it out until it gets to it. Now I know not many will say out loud what I just said, because the slavery mentality and the submission to being suppressed for so long is so deeply rooted in Cabo Verde and the people still today. Becoming independent did not sit well with many, but here I am, born in America and taught to stand up. So I'm not easy to embrace, and my words are harsher than most. But oh, how true they are. Oh, and I have a Portuguese friend. Uh, and guess what? They agree with me because some of them know history too. So they, they, they see what's happening. We should have an affirmative action officer working with the protected police and the fire department to implement a plan to bring more minorities into these positions. I can attest to an agreement made during meetings with CU4PC and the public safety director slash chief, along with the mayor, where affirmative action director from East Providence, vice president of the NAACP, NAACP Elma Pina, offered his assistance in creating an affirmative action position and to assist with the process of hiring a police officer. 
And that meeting, in that meeting, the president of the NAACP, uh, Jim Vincent, was also present, where there was a clear agreement that this idea was welcomed by all. The city doesn't know, doesn't not want it bad enough because it never happened. Question, questions that were discussed there um, were: Is their testing valid? Is this testing validated for public safety position? And if so, how? Those questions were answered. If the tests were biased towards minorities, is the hiring panel diverse? Are they given points to those who speak and write in another language? Those were the questions that were asked then. Why are they still being asked now? How welcoming are these departments being when it comes to minorities working with them? It's an interesting question for the city. In the past, the Kentucky Police Department employees have made racial comments to minorities hired. And in their, their employment with the city was short-lived due to the non-acceptance by white employees already there. This is all documented, I believe. Uh, if Valley Breeze wrote about that. We don't know what those officers went after they complained though. It would be interesting to find out. Maybe one of you guys would ask. I purposely do not share information about opportunities for minorities in the city because I watch the disrespect and lack of acceptance and abuse they suffer when qualified for any position. Unless human resources starts to hold people accountable for their abuse on others, and unless they create consequences for those types of bullying within the workplace, then any conversation about hiring minorities into this hostile white environment should be put on hold. We should be having conversations on how to clean it up first and cater to the true diversity of the city. Walking into this building as a minority, I don't see any, well, without considering a job opportunity. I don't see myself considering a job opportunity here. I don't even feel welcome when I come to pay taxes or pay a ticket or get ignored by the council. Yeah, uh, minorities in the city see this building as a place where nothing good happens for them, whereas the whites see this building as an opportunity to make things work for them including a paycheck. A person with a language barrier must pay and or bring a translator. Why? Why does the city choose to hire whites only then they mo the mo in, in the most diverse city in the state not here to provide translation services? Who can tell me this is not done by design and done to further remind all the minorities that they are dismissed here? For example, let's take the Molly Field situation where the whites, well, kind of racist tendencies, who make decisions for the city and the offices are planning, have si or, or in planning, have silenced all voices of the minority leadership. And any whites who have dared to stand up for the minority children in this defy, those in this building making decisions have once again stood by the administration's bullying of the minority community to remind us over and over that we do not matter, and by design, we will never matter. Until your actions, your actions, speak louder than our words. When I helped this mayor become mayor, I was fooled into believing that the Office for the Caribbean Liaison would be one of the first things he would hire someone for. Yet, here we are almost a decade later and that office is still empty. Hiring minorities and threatening them to not work with minority leadership in order to help the community is not very impressive. It actually further proves that this administration hires outsiders just to have photo ops to reflect the brown dot amongst them and fool us that we have representation. When the truth is, they are blackballed if they work too well with the minority community. Today, again, we have the theatrics of this human resource department even assuming that they can come in here and talk about why they're having a problem hiring minorities. Um, they're trying so hard, but it's not their fault. Minorities won't apply. Well, I'm a minority, and this is the last place I ever work until major changes happen. Thanks. Thank you.